Good evening. The federal government of Nigeria has extended lockdown period due to COVID-19 pandemic by additional two weeks. Uh, in the first instance of lockdown, uh, there were serious uh, chaos of people uh, bombarding uh, truckload of palliative materials, hijacking them, and even at night, people had to resort to becoming vigilantes because uh, there was, you know, robbery as a result of people claiming that they are hungry and the rest of them. Although police came out to say that no, it's uh, rival court gang who are taking advantage of the lockdown to begin to also rob people. But then, whatever the case, this is a time where people are supposed to stay indoor. At any rate, this has continued to make, uh, you know, mockery of the stay at home and social distancing directive by the federal government because as a matter of fact people cannot distance themselves when they are rushing to get palliative and scrambling to get something to feed well i have with me uh, a comrade uh with the socialist movement of nigeria his name is uh, comrade taiwo azan soweto and it's live with me to be discussing the situation as as it were right now good evening comrade how are you doing yeah i'm fine good evening good evening nigeria it's good to have you yes same here. yes so Thank you. so far how would you how would you describe uh the extension i mean when the moment you heard that there would be additional 14 day extension what was your reaction well uh it came as a shock to me because uh knowing how much people suffered during the first uh, 14 days i mean the question that popped up in my mind is what provisions have the federal government uh, made before deciding to lock society down for another 14 days mm. and the answer is very clear today there's nothing that has been provided Hmm. The few palliatives that have been uh, distributed are not adequate, hmm. so that uh, millions of Nigerians are still with nothing. Hmm. And that is what is foiling the current uh, security that you have in different states today. Hmm. Okay, so now, have you? I don't know what your own area is, it might be secure. But uh, I'm aware that in many places in Lagos, as we speak right now, it is not safe because many people have resorted to becoming vigilantes on their own. Uh, I mean, what is the situation like in your own area? Because some of you are safe. Uh, no, I know. The area is very uh, chaotic. Uh, we've been having uh, frequent uh, threats from um, bandits. Uh, but yesterday evening, Around 8 p.m., I was uh, having my dinner hmm. uh, in preparation to join the nightly vigilante activities, only for my neighbors and other people to rush to my apartment uh, with the report that an attack was taking place just close by. I had to leave my meal. We rushed out to mobilize, and uh, we didn't get back home until uh, 4 a.m. in the morning. In fact, I just left the food, I mean, half eaten. Uh, and that's to tell you the level of the panic that we also have here. For the past five days or thereabout, uh, we have been going about every night to try and secure uh, our community. Uh, here is the Olambe. My community is called Olambe, which is in the Agbado Kiaro LCD under a for local government of Ogun State. It's one of the border towns, you know, between uh, Lagos and Ogun State. Uh, so it's it's very, uh, it's, it's an area which can be easily overrun hmm. by bandits because hmm. also there are no provisions for security. We, have, we don't have any police stations here, and the roads are so terrible, hmm. and um, the environment is so porous, uh, except for the few efforts by the landlords to provide some mayor of sanity in the environment other than that there's hardly anything you can call government presence hmm. did you listen to the president's speech upon announcing 14 day extension on the covid 19 lockdown yes i did what what did you make of it 
Uh, it, it's um, a speech that reflects uh, the mindset, you know, the capitalist elite that mm. at no time, you know, would they uh, see the rest of us, the working class, ordinary people, mm. at no time would they see us as human beings. Mm. Uh, because you go through the entire speech, it's filled with admonition, you know, and um, exhortation of Nigerians to uh, be more ready to sacrifice, to be more ready to uh, to, to, to stay at home without for a moment, you know, considering what can be done to ensure that uh, people are able to stay at home without dying of hunger. And that is because there are, there are two different realities in Nigeria. The members of the capitalist real elite, no matter how much they try, they are not able to understand the realities of ordinary people. Mm. Uh, my own experience here has been very, very uh, educating. Uh, I have been going around for the past two weeks or three weeks with my nose marks and all of that. Uh, and uh, usually I see that a lot of people don't bother to go back with their nose marks. And usually I'm horrified by that kind of thing. Until I learned my own lesson. And that was about four days ago. <laughs> when there was a big scare that uh, the bandits were close by in the afternoon. In fact, they were running, overrunning the communities yeah. one by one. Uh, so in my own area, everybody came out and started to put up uh, barricades and bonfires. Hmm. So I ran out with others with my nose mask, you know, and uh, it was interesting because I didn't realize I was the only one with a nose mask. But I was, I was also not armed. Whatever that person were going about, you know, with arms, in fact, some really didn't have cutlasses rushed to the nearest store <laughs> and bought cutlasses with their own money. They bought uh, whistles and coal. And that, for me, was politically educating because it, it then became clear to me that uh, for ordinary people, mm. you know, uh, insecurity, hunger, mm. and all of these things are the are most visible threats to their existence. And they are ready to mobilize, to curtail that, to, 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 to fight that. But when it comes to a disease, you know, of the scale of a coronavirus, as far as they are concerned, uh, it's not something that is real to them. And that's not because uh, they are not aware of the need to protect their heads, but it is because when they are faced with multiple dangers and they have to face the one that is uh, most visible, Absolutely. which is the question of hunger. But for members of the ruling elite and the, and the rich, uh, they are living in world of uh, mansions. Uh, they have uh, hundreds of securities around them. And the, the, their pantries, their kitchens are filled with food. So the question of hunger, the question of security is removed from uh, their own reality. Uh, and so they can easily be able to appreciate all the other nuances of life. Uh, and that's why poverty really makes people to be vulnerable. Uh, because it does not allow them to take rational decisions. Uh, we have to go back to what uh, Kola Gwodi said, that uh, uh, rationality ends with hunger. And that's because uh, when a man is hungry, then they are unable to do uh, anything that is right. Uh, which is why for us as a political party and an organization, we have been calling on uh, the government to provide palliative not only from an humanitarian point of view, that is not only because we think people should not be allowed to die of hunger, mm. but also because the lockdown will not be effective, the lockdown will not be successful, when people have to increasingly violate it, but they have to go out to find something to eat. Uh, and what that therefore means is that we are likely going to face a situation whereby every 14 days will be repeatedly, you know, announced, hmm. you know, as, uh, as as lockdowns. You could have constant increment in the in the, in the, in the, in the lockdowns, and that's because if at the expiration of another 14 days, uh, if after the expiration of the next uh, 14 days, if you don't have uh, the numbers going down, that is the numbers of infected. Uh, I mean, persons going down. Government will have no choice but to want to announce another lockdown. Mm. And then when they announce another lockdown, people will still violate it because at that time, the younger would have become intensified, mm. you know, uh, which means that, uh, um, you know, the, the social distancing will not take place and that the infections will not, uh, will not go down. In fact, even with the security situation now, which means that all of us have to uh, come out every evening, you know, to do vigilancy activities. It, it, it has also been undermining the lockdown itself, you know, because you have people moving around, uh, talking themselves, sitting down together, 
and um, uh, any uh, saliva from anyone could easily touch the next person. And through all of this process, the lockdown has been uh, has been uh, has been undermined. Mm -hmm. But if you have uh, adequate palliatives being provided, it's going to it's going to restore. Uh, in the long way, the issue of insecurity because we didn't have this level of widespread insecurity before in Lagos and Ogun State. What has provoked this current insecurity is because a lot of a lot more people are hungry. You know, you have um, Okada riders, you have daily income earners, even people who don't have a job. But on the basis of the fact that uh, you know you, we we have a communal kind of uh, attitude. Mm. in Nigeria, in Africa. Many people don't even have a job. If they go out in the day and they come back, on the basis of seeing their friends, they are always able to get one or two naira to, to fend for themselves. But all of that has been shut down today. And that just has increased the desperation for ordinary, of ordinary people. Uh, and, the, uh, and the insecurity would uh, increase, really, mm. with every lockdown that is announced. But if there is palliative, you know, that will mean that a lot more people will be able to sit at home. They don't have to go out. And the lockdown will be effective. So, even from the point of view of an effective lockdown, a question of a palliative becomes you know, very important. We are not just talking about sharing of food. We also think that uh, there must be cash grants, you know, to, to, to working class households. I must also make uh, a reference uh, to the hypocr hypocritical manner, you know, that uh, the government and the apologies of the government have been uh, carrying on, trying to justify this brutal lockdown without palliatives. They are continuing to say that uh, they only want to give money to the poorest or the poor. Uh, beyond the um, questioning how they come, uh, how, they, how they arrive at uh, the services of the poorest or the poor, is the need to also stress the point that it, uh, at this period, you know, everybody is vulnerable. You know, in working people, middle class people, almost everyone is vulnerable except, except the rich. And that's because for anyone who is not able to go out to earn an income, it means that their savings have been depleted you know, by the day. And um, they, they are not likely going to be able to sustain feeding themselves for too long before they also become hungry. So, for any government that has uh, uh, the, 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 that has interest on the people at heart, you know, making a provision for every household becomes uh, one of the most important steps to take, you know, to ensure that uh, people do not feel the pinch you know, of this lockdown for too long. I mean, for too long. Some of the things that many Nigerians actually reacted to is the. Uh, mm -hmm development that we have to start bringing chinese doctors in uh many are worried a lot of people are actually curious that uh, w what would be the rationale how many how many nigerians are infected how many people in nigeria have the covid 19 case such that we would need so it raises a lot of question are you also worried that bringing chinese doctors into the country in fact we even heard that one of them also tested positive are you also worried, like many people are worried on social media, uh, that Chinese doctors are now thrown in Nigeria, whereas we don't have as much cases as other, as other places that have desperate number of cases? Well, um, I, I'm not worried, and, and I think we must be careful uh, not to um, not to muddy the waters. Necessarily. You know, when, uh, when it comes to this issue. Uh, that's not to say that um, there is any justification for uh, the government to bring in uh, any any foreign uh, medical personnel at this stage. And that's not to say there's any because you are right that uh, the number of cases do not yet uh, uh, merit uh, that kind of uh, mayor. But we have also had the explanation that uh, it's, it's the Chinese uh, construction company that uh, requires the help of these people for their own staff. But whatever is the case, I think that. Um, uh, it is not correct to give the impression that uh, this uh, disease, you know, uh, comes with a race or with a particular kind of people. Uh, because I think that uh, the response of uh, the uh, the medical unions, like um, uh, I think NMA and uh, the Association of Resident Doctors, there's a racist uh, slur that you could uh, see from some of the things they are saying. I think it's correct for them. You know, to insist that uh, Nigerian doctors and Nigerian medical personnel must be given all of the assistance that is required, uh, not just in terms of the equipment, but also in terms of um, uh, a hazard allowance. Uh, and uh, for the government to take this opportunity as a basis, you know, to improve our healthcare sector and even declare free health, you know, at all levels. Those are the kind of points I think need, I mean, to be made uh, so that we don't uh, 
create a situation whereby uh, we uh, exercise or uh, use racist law for a worldwide uh, challenge. Because the reality is that um, in China, you know, uh, you don't have just um, uh, the, 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 in China today, the Chinese people are as much a victim of the responsibility of their government, just as much as uh, we Nigerians are a victim of the responsibility of our government. For instance, uh, the the virus had um, been on, you know, ravaging entire population in China since uh, November, December of last year, and, and, and it took the government uh, about two months or thereabout before they came out openly, you know, to 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 to, to I mean, to admit that uh, they had that kind of challenge. Uh, before then, you know, the doctor who uh, raised the alarm over this was ignored. I mean, was even uh, was even petitioned. Mm -hmm. Only for the individual eventually yes. to die of the disease. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's to tell you just how terrible, you know, how at the at the worker, you know, you have the Chinese government really is. And it's the same pattern of a response you know, to the crisis that you also have in other countries like France, like US, where, for instance, the US President Trump for many weeks, you know, doubted I mean, even the fact that uh, the, the virus was free and in the process, you know, uh, exposing the Americans to, 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 to what has become. Uh, is scourge in that country today. So we, we, we should uh, blame the capitalist government of all countries, you know, why we try to build the uh, solidarity uh, on an international basis <laughs> with all other victims, with all other victims of this crisis, including yes. the doctors speaking, everywhere. Speaking solidarity, people. speaking solidarity, I remember that uh, shortly before the airport was actually therefore shut down, many Nigerians have been calling that, how about you just close the airport? You know, but yes. we learned that they were waiting for some people to come in or something. Now that they have locked yes. everybody down, and uh, yes. <laughs> so would you also mm. pass blame at the doorstep of the government for allowing this mm. fresta before f finally adhering or listening or hearkening to the voice of the masses? And then now that it has become a pandemic, and the Nigerians are being locked in, but government does not want to admit that it should affect the government but the people. Would you also say that the government is culpable, uh, delaying mm -hmm. to to close the airport against the pandemic? I uh, definitely, you are, you are very right, and that's what, what I was trying to say when I started from the response in China, going to other countries in Europe, including the US. How the government uh, failure to take uh, media decisions, uh, you know, led to the the kind of situation we have in those countries. Similarly, also in Nigeria, where we even had more time. You know, because it took the disease a longer period of time to get to, I mean, to, to West Africa, you know, so that uh, there was enough time you know, for our government to have taken more farishing decisions. They never did that. But what is even more damning, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is the conduct, the hypocritical conduct of government officials and politicians, mm -hmm. some of whom were the uh, the ends of affair, ruling, ruling out um, the safety precautions that all Nigerians should follow. But when they themselves came back into the country, you know, they refused to observe any of these things. And I'm talking of the chief of staff to the president, Nwabia Kiari, you know, who successfully, you know, infected a number of persons just because he refused to do what himself was preaching. And not just that, you have in Oyo State, the governor of Oyo State, you know, who was carrying on a CV and nothing was wrong until, uh, I mean, Oyo State itself became another centerpiece of the virus. Hmm. They organized political rallies, parties, and all of that. Hmm. And uh, away from that, I mean, other politicians and co behaved you know, the same uh, irresponsible, irresponsible manner. Mm. Uh, but the highest responsibility that you find, you know, from the government is the fact that uh, this pandemic is making Nigeria nearly prostrate mm. in terms of our healthcare provision. Uh, we hope that um, some of the specific conditions in Nigeria, you know, were were so that uh, this pandemic does not really become, you know, a big, uh, a big, a big crisis. Because otherwise, if we have this. Even a cut out the kind of cases that you have in the US or in Nigeria today, our health care system will completely overrun and the people will be dying just like flies. Mm. But it appears that uh, for different reasons, maybe also because uh, uh, of the higher pop population of young people in, in, in Nigeria and Africa, you know, and some other conditions, you know, the, the virus spread has not been as rapid as you have in other, in other countries. But we must also strike the point because uh, we're not likely going to have to be, to, 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 to be lucky twice. You know, because uh, we don't have a health care system, you know, that can uh, even undo just uh, 
uh, a case of Malaya. a full loaded bus is involved in an accident. No, I'm not talking of some of the things we have seen at our emergency you know, rooms in many public hospitals. You have a full loaded bus in an hospital, just about 40 people are injured, and by the time you, you get to the emergency, there are no beds. You know, people have to go down on the floor while you are passing the syringe or whatever into their body. That's to tell you the fact that uh, you have a completely collapsed uh, public health care system. Mm. We don't have enough doctors, we don't have enough nurses, mm. because you are not paying them, and many of them have to run out of the country. Of the country. At this stage, we need to make a very important demand, you know, for a uh, massive investment, you know, in, in public health care, uh, a declaration of free health care at all levels, to ensure that all communities are covered, you know. There must be medical insurance, you know, as well as life insurance for for medical personnel mm. uh okay. and most importantly yes but let me take you to uh, let me take you this route of uh, many countries who are affected by this pandemic are already currently in recession most of them are yeah. sincere enough to have come out to admit that they are facing recession already do you see nigeria coming out of because the price of oil being nigeria being a monolithic economy the only thing nigeria depends on currently is oil and the price of oil has also gone down in the international market once pan this pandemic if this pandemic lasts longer or stretches too further than we anticipate do you see nigeria surviving economically uh, already nigeria is um uh nigeria is going to face is already on the brink of facing a recession. Or would you also I think that Nigeria is already bankrupt? I, Let's not even waste that I time. Say on the, I say on the brink. Let me let me just uh, tell you that I say on the brink only because I know that uh, we, we shall have the figures, you know, to talk for us. Um, maybe the next uh, one or two months, you have the NBS bringing out the, the economy statistics, and then we then know just how much of our uh, of our growth level has gone down. But uh, in all applications, when you look at how our economy internally has been hit, both by the pandemic the both, both by the manifestation of the disease in nigeria but also by the fact that uh, the way the pandemic has affected uh, global supply chains you know across across the world you know that means that in many ways you know there's no way the economy will not take it uh if you consider what um, uh, the imf said a number of days ago uh, where they said that uh, african economies would uh, have about three percent of their gdp you know uh uh, affected by uh, it does give you an idea of the kind of crisis that happened in Nigeria. So, uh, we are likely going to emerge from this pandemic early, but in terms of the economic manifestation, you could have a long period of a serious uh, crisis in this country economically with uh, redundancies, with layoffs, uh, and uh, a lot of people losing their jobs and, uh, and income. Yes. Already, as we speak, a number of companies. You know, are already declaring force major, mm -hmm. which means that uh, they are not going to pay their uh, their workers, and that's why we are making the demand that uh, there must be protection for jobs. Government must be prepared, you know, to provide assistance, you know, to companies that face that kind of reality. But on the basis of uh, uh, an agreement, you know, that such uh, companies must be prepared, you know, to pay workers a minimum wage and to also end the casualization. But beyond that is that if there is any company that has the means. You know to pay its workers and yes they want to declare first major or to declare redundancy government was prepared you know, to take such companies over nationalize them under democratic workers control uh but there's also one thing to say about the economy really which i think this crisis has also made the uh, very very clear to all of us and it is that the way we run our economy on the basis of profits not just in nigeria but all over the world would always continue to make all of us vulnerable mm -hmm. uh because today now you have a, you have a crisis which has is threatening the existence of the world and uh, nobody is talking about the private sector. Everybody is talking about what the government can do. Everybody is talking about what the public healthcare system can do. Everybody is talking about how the CBN can bail out banks, bail out industries and co. Hmm. What that means is that the the whole idea that private sector should be drivers of our economy hmm. is, is a is a fraud that has hmm. been uh, committed against all of us. We must now demand that we go back, you know, to having an economy run on base of on basis of people's needs. And that's only possible, you know, on the basis of a socialist uh, plan of the economy uh in the world today the race to find a vaccine uh is not going to be hampered by our scientific and technical knowledge today the world has it means scientifically to find the vaccine for just almost any kind of diseases mm. the major problem we have is a profit interest of first two companies yeah. see every crisis in the army has an opportunity to sell their drugs government does not have control over these pharmaceutical companies 
you know, government all over the world have really quit their role, you know, to the private sector, to the oligarchs, billionaires, you know, who control our lives, control our health care, control our education, controls, you know, the fate of our of our environment. This is time for working class people all over the world to rise up, to begin to, I mean, demand an end to such kind of profit system. Capitalism is a major problem that we have. We need a socialist plan of the economy. We need a working class and poor people's government to begin to draw a new future now, for all of us. That is what we need at this time. Uh, now, now, still talking about the economy, you know, Nigeria is said to still be borrowing. We've been borrowing ever since. Uh, <laughs> would you also support, uh, I mean, would you also support the rationale for borrowing before and even at this present time? Would you support rationale for borrowing? And if we uh, must borrow, mm. are you? Will you also support the basis for the borrowing? I do not support it because um, there are there are two things about borrowing. Uh, a man could borrow when he's truly uh, poor; he doesn't have money, and then he borrows in order to offset and all of that. But when a man has money, he refuses to spend it and then goes out to borrow. Uh, that's uh, recklessness. Uh, and they do this only because they know that uh, the burden of this debt you know, will be on all of us, the working people and all of that. Mm. Uh, and that is why we need to demand that borrowing is not the way out. The Nigeria economy has the resources and wealth you know, to, 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 to respond to this crisis. The only problem that this wealth, which is our common wealth, is currently held by few rich people who own you know, the commanding height of our economy, including the oil sector, including banking and finance, including the main industries and production. So far, they continue to hold to these things. It means that they continue to hold to a bigger slice of our commonwealth. And that means that the society as a whole will not have the resources, even when the wealth is there. Hmm. What we need to do, you know, is for us to take the wealth of the world 1% and put it to public use. For the first time, Nigerians need to insist that our wealth cannot be held by a few, and we think that we are we are we are running a society. Lastly, Nigeria I, has enough resources. Lastly, I don't know if I can if I can ask you this, but let me try. Uh, you know, most of the people said they they had they tested positive to Corona in Nigeria in less than in less than a week or two. Most of them came out, including governors came out to say they are now negative mm. <laughs> and then there has been public opinions or allegations trailing it many people claiming no you are all, you are merely just packing malaria patients into isolation center and bringing them out after mm. three four days and claiming that they are now negative uh do you think nigeria truly has <laughs> serious cases of corona pandemic or do you think we are just joking about it true <laughs> well obviously not all cases will be will be fraudulent uh, uh, so there, there must be some uh, real cases. Uh, we have seen some who have been uh, discharged, who have spoken to the to the press, and these are not people who could, uh, who I think, could risk their life for their integrity, for the purpose of uh, uh, that kind of uh, showmanship. But you know, uh, we have a very roguish and inherently corrupt uh, real elite who take advantage of any situation, you know, to steal and to loot. So I wouldn't be surprised. You know, if, as you have said, there are cases whereby some governors, you know, pack some people together and say that, uh, I mean, they have uh, coronavirus. Anything is possible with a rubbish, really elite. They have done far worse before. Uh, look at the war against uh, Boko Haram. Look at how much fraud, how much uh, looting is going on. Thereby endangering the lives of ordinary uh, soldiers and the people living in the communities, you know, in Borno and all of that. So, uh, for the really elite, our life is just like... Uh, uh, commodities that you can trade at any point in time. Uh, we have had the, uh, I mean, uh, what do you call them? Uh, property developers in Nigeria who use uh, substandard materials to build their houses and co. And those houses will collapse uh, a month after, killing people. So uh, the, the bottom line is that we deal with a capitalist new elite that is inherent and amassing with through all means fear and foul. And the working people, you know, have to be prepared you know, to overthrow them and put in their place, you know, workers and public governments that is based, you know, on the socialist plan of the economy. Because only that kind of economy can ensure that uh, we all look after, after ourselves and not uh, a dog eat man uh, system whereby yeah. few people take off all the weight 
why the rest of us are allowed uh, allowed to suffer. I think that's the bottom line, both for Nigeria and for across across the world. Uh, in the healthcare system, uh, system today uh, in Nigeria, we, we have seen just how much uh, not funding the healthcare system can, 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 can cost us. And I want to again I repeat the demand. One, which is that uh, we need better protection for our doctors and our nurses, but also the cleaners. Everybody is on the front line today. Because not only the doctors are on the front line, those who are doing the fumigation are all on the front lines. And these are people people can easily come into contact with the virus than any one of us that are sitting at home. We need protection for them. We need insurance for them. We need that allowance for them. But far beyond that is that we need a well-funded, free healthcare system that can ensure that another crisis does not uh, meet us. This, this is frustrating. Lastly, let me ask you, I mean, uh, as a way of closing, uh, you see, this time, uh, a lot of people are also wondering, um, if because you're an activist for instance and many people would say uh, the only way out of this kind of thing because people are locked down in less than two weeks of the lockdown a lot of people are already angry and hungry and already uh, bringing forth us or exhibiting all sort of behaviors already you would have suggested that there should be mass revolt or mass protests against this kind of situation where government is not giving people palliative necessarily uh, to be able to survive the lockdown but in this lockdown situation people will not be able to come out gather and protest as an activist with years of experience what do you suggest for people to do at a kind at a time like this uh, oh yes uh, obviously um, public activities are going to be uh, difficult even if not uh, uh, unreasonable you know at this time when all of us are supposed to be at home uh, but given the irresponsibility of the capitalist ruling really elite and how much they are in our lives, we also cannot keep quiet. So I urge everyone uh, not to allow uh, our mouth and the other means of uh, raising our demands to be locked down, you know, with, uh, with this virus. Uh, we need to use the social media more and more, uh, exposing the ruling really elite, uh, which is why it's been very interesting and very heartwarming. The way people have been streaming live or putting out videos of the uh, inadequate policies that government uh, officials have been circulating. Uh, but also beyond that is that we also need to look at what minimal organizing can we also do on the ground. For instance, in our own area, uh, we've been utilizing the uh, the nightly uh, patrol and, and vigilance activities to also raise discussions, you know, with the people about what needs to be done. And uh, one of the sources of that now is that there has now been a decision by the youth of my own community uh, to do a letter, mm. you know, to the uh, local government chairman, mm. you know, uh, uh, demanding for uh, adequate palliatives, you know, to be sent down to the community, uh, raising the point that uh, as much as we want to keep going out every night to defend our community, the reality is that if the hunger that is setting off this bandit is not... Uh, addressed the banditry will continue and then even those of us who are going out every day to defend our community if our own hunger increases we know have the strength to keep going out every day so that the only way to prevent bloodshed in the community is for the palliatives you know to be to come uh, and the statistics of the number of households in the area will be drawn up so that uh, the government is uh, made clear as to how much uh, palliatives we need we don't want the uh, five cups of uh, gary uh, we don't want the five cost of Gary that they were circulating before. We need actually something that uh, can ensure that everybody has something to eat in their different households. So these are the steps that uh, they have agreed to take. Uh, we, we need to see what will come out of that. And I also urge everyone in their own community to do something similar. But writing a letter and submitting does not need a crowd. It's just for the leadership, you know, to, to do something and then uh, and get it uh, and get it across. Uh, beyond that, also is that um, uh, we, we we also must. Uh, uh, utilize the opportunities that uh, the few days because like in open state now uh what we have seen is that uh, sometimes the the or not any alternate days rather uh the the lockdown is relaxed for people to go out so for those who need to organize mass activities you know like a protest or whatever you know those are days that uh, free movement is allowed that you can utilize but of course it doesn't mean that to protest that you have to come together just five, ten people 
coming together as facing themselves very well with placards, you know, and going to the front of the house of the chairman in their environment mm -hmm. or the house of the honorable representing their environment, uh, their, their area, their constituency. It's enough to send the signal. Even two people can do this. They don't have to value social distancing. On those days that the free movement are allowed, they should organize themselves, go out, space themselves, uh, lift up the placards, get uh, uh, their friends to take their pictures. That is going to circulate on social media. And people will, use, will also call out the individual, the, 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 the honorable that is concerned, and they would have to explain explain themselves. Because we must not allow them to get away with what they are doing. Uh, and all of these exposures, would also have to prepare the consciousness of the people so that by the time this lockdown is over, mm. you know, what will be going to be a season, you know, of uh, uh, of uh, uh, of uh, uh, questioning those who have betrayed us uh, I mean, during this lockdown. It will be a season of mass protest, you know, periods when people would want to go out to do those things they could not do at this time. You know, we should be to show to those who have betrayed us that as a people, you know, when you betray the working people, you have got to pay the price. And the price is... Uh, for you to be visited by the public anger through protests and demonstrations. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you uh, coming as an answer. And I wish you all the best uh, because I understand that tonight you are still going out again to join the vigil yes. voluntary vigilante group in your community. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's unfortunate at a time like this. Thank you so much, comrade. I, I have to let you go now because I understand you are still yes. organizing your community for the vigilante trip. Bye right for you. now. You are welcome, sir. Touch. Bye. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, people. That's uh, Comrade Azan Tai also wait till we just are on the show explaining and discussing uh, the realities of people who are currently locked down in Lagos, Abuja, uh, Ogun State, and other states uh, is also concerned and worried about the the situations. Uh, despite, I mean, in spite of the lockdown, people are not with food. People do not have something to survive with. And on top of that, there's also a rising security uh, issue and people have to resort to becoming vigilantes in their respective communities. And that, uh, I mean, you heard the discussion. If you join late, please, uh, you can always uh, start playing back all over again. If you're new to this channel, you can subscribe so that you can join us in subsequent conversations as we take the conversation for that. From tomorrow, again, I'm going to have more, or, I mean, other guests. And then I want to appreciate you once more for joining the live stream today. My name is Sher Golo. Please, uh, if you are also watching later, you can put your comments if there's anything you feel we should also know from your community, from your area. Please put them in the comment box so that all of us can benefit from the information in your area. Bye for now. I'm going to leave you with the utter entertainment, uh, utter entertainment music. Uh, this is sensitization music made by Utter Entertainers Association. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. A be pro This message is brought to you by Otter Entertainers Association. I don't want to worry about the bike COVID-19. The mass of people are deadly, will not be whining. Death rate high, be jumbo, no be tiny. Global anthem these days, we are not on me. You could talk by the me, you quite the kita because one of the corona, I don't talk by the kita. You just ban it because I'm not tied. One of the chemicals, you should share distance. Load you on the road, I'll be back. We are down, Lagos. Shut down, Abuja. Shut down, you Corona go bench, Corona go tapa, somebody say a prayer, but it's not a lot, sanitize, oh, but that's sanitize. It's your bad for a while, but you stay safe. Money can stay indoor, money can play safe. Corona broken, I put you in slow. I saw you let you look on, I did go to full line. Church and your mouth, get on your ball over. Come out to the counter, fake jail, pull up, pull up, pull up. Emi yo la ro, come out to my rawa, come out kira la to kiri, come out for me a touch for what yo. God, you please help us. Just for me there, yeah. Heal the world right now. Oh, yeah. This that is too much. Oh, 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 this that is too much.
the matter no be play, no be say you are the lie. Sanitize and say harm. Corona too real, no be lie. Oh Lord, they come to ask you if you die, finish hell, you no go like you. Go to the world and multiply. Now, now, every day we they die. Oh Lord, we they cry. We pray make you heal from this deadly disease. Oh, wash your hand all the time. Cover your nose all the time. Social distancing all the time. Bro, it's coming in. Sanitizing all the time. Listen, this is a trying time. We better be staying safe. Social distancing is better than your early grave. It's a skilling spring, that's why it's making way. By the grace of God, we ain't gonna die. It is important we continue to try to keep staying though if you wanna be a ride. Uh -huh. Social distancing, the government is preaching, guarantees you're living. You better I listen. Like COVID, on Jamilaya. They kill him like David and Goliath. But we balance it, and we balance it. Who they pray like a poly and the silence yeah. So I say shout out to, to the high rank yeah. I see they waiting for the alert I yeah. like your money where you not convert you yeah. And money call it beating Mr. Abbott yeah. I shut down Lagos up Shut down Abuja too Shut down USA Corona shut down Abraham